Well, last year we came to the Second Sight booth and talked to Dwayne Tsutsui, and he's back here with a little more information, some updates on some of the uh, devices that they're working on that are very exciting uh, for low vision. Let's, uh, why don't you start us off with what's come along since we last talked to you? Okay, well, since uh, last year, we've made some uh, uh, very nice uh, strides in, in our uh, product development efforts in uh, creating new technology, new uh, algorithms to improve the uh, the imaging that the uh, that the patient gets uh, with the Argus 2. And the Argus 2 was specifically for, uh, is it retinal pigmentosa? Uh, yeah, it's for uh, patients who have gone completely blind due to retinitis pigmentosa, yes. Retinitis, I'll get it, yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so in uh, this is audio and video, but in his hands, he's got a, uh, a little model of a head with some eyeballs and he's going to pull an eyeball out. Don't get scared. It's a fake one. <laughs> yeah, so this is the, uh, the Argus 2 device and uh, it consists of an electronics package that is implanted uh, in and around the eye. The, the package is uh, uh, placed underneath the major muscles of the eye and then a small incision is made in the sclera right here and then if you look inside, you can see the array that's tacked onto the back of the eye uh, in the, in, on, on the surface of the, of the retina. And then on the side, you've got a coil here. I assume that's an antenna to talk to the, yes. to the device that the person wears on their head? That's correct. It's uh, an antenna and an induction coil. That's how the, uh, the device is uh, powered. Okay, so, so there's no battery in your eyeball that you got to get replaced? No, the battery is on the external uh, computer that the patient wears. Okay, and that external computer is a pair of glasses. Let me just grab that here for a sec yes. and then pull it off the table. Uh, so it's a pair of glasses. That's got to be the induction coil there on the and, side? Uh, this is the transmitter and induction coil, um, but the, uh, uh, the computer is this video processing unit, and you can see the battery here. Uh, and this is what is the brains of the whole operation. This is where all the algorithms and, and uh, signal processing uh, software is, is located. So this is pretty cool. I mean, it's not that much bigger than something you'd wear to uh, talk on a, at a conference, the, the battery pack thing hooked to your, eye, to your uh, glasses there. Yes. Okay, let me set that back down there for you. All right, so um, you said you also mentioned that you've gotten more uh, Medicare approval from some states. Uh, yes, uh, we have. Uh, we continue to expand our uh, coverage, uh, or we get we get positive coverage in uh, in states. Uh, so that's how it gets paid for for people, yes, right? Yes, yeah, that, and kind of important, but yeah, that's uh, how uh, we can obtain uh, payment for the the system and the uh, surgery. Okay, so this surgery is going on in real humans right now. Uh, yes, that is uh, correct. We're uh, close to three hundred patients now. Uh, wow. Yeah, so we're expanding. It's, it's That's really exciting. That's a real deal. That's no CES someday thing. So uh, <laughs> you idly mentioned that you have another product for people with other kinds of blindness. Uh, yes, uh, that is uh, called the Orion uh, cortical prosthesis. And uh, as uh, you had mentioned earlier, the Argus is for people uh, who have lost their vision due to retinitis pigmentosa only. Um, there are far number, uh, a greater number of people who have gone blind for, for other reasons, and that's why we developed the Orion uh, device. Um, the exciting thing uh, about the Orion is that we have, in fact, uh, since, since we last uh, talked, uh, we, we have started the, uh, the clinical trial. Uh, it, it's at two centers, UCLA in Los Angeles, as well as Baylor University in Houston. Uh, we did our first implant in January, and uh, we have another one scheduled for uh, for next week. Um, this involves an array that we what we do is we bypass the eye and the optic nerve altogether and place an array uh, onto the surface of the visual cortex of the brain. Oh wow! Now you you mentioned before we were talking that that this is for acquired blind blindness because your brain has to have figured out how to process those signals at some point in time. Yes, you you had to have had some. Uh, uh, you had to have some functional vision at some point uh, or another. So if you've had functional vision at some time and then lost your vision, that's what I refer to as acquired blindness, um, then you would qualify uh, uh, for, the, for the device. Okay, so the Orion is it the same sort? It's not the same sort of device. It's actually an array. It's a it's a detector detecting light and changing the signals into something. Um, no, it works a lot uh, in the same way that the uh, Argus uh, uh, does. It's a uh, it, it's an array of electrodes that uh, works together with a uh, camera that's mounted onto a pair of glasses, and anything that uh, the camera captures, uh, it gets lit up. That shape gets lit up onto uh, the array, 
And it, rather than having it projected onto your retina like the uh, Argus 2, it's projected directly uh, onto the uh, uh, visual cortex of your of your brain so you don't even need eyes nor a um, uh, uh, an optic nerve uh, to see the uh, the, fo the flashes that is crazy so what kind of resolution are we talking about today um, well it's still a 60 uh, electrode uh, array so uh, you know that that's uh, kind of hard to say exactly the resolution is that like 60 by 60 pixels or? no it's actually uh, 6 by 10 uh, electrodes but it's kind of hard to really uh, gauge uh, uh, resolution because of the way that an individual electrode, when it when it activates cells, it doesn't necessarily activate. You know, it's not it's one. In a nice pixel. rectangular array yeah, for it's, us. It's, it's it's not one particular uh, pixel that they see. Sometimes a single uh, electrode could actually elicit multiple um, uh, uh, flashes. So, uh, can you give any vague idea? I mean, is it like you could see a doorway, but you couldn't recognize a person, or could you read? What what level is every time? Right. Um, you you would not be able to recognize uh, facial features or read, uh, but you could see uh, uh, doorways, uh, windows. Um, you could see lines in the crosswalk. Any kind of situation where there's a lot of contrast. Uh, if you're walking along a pathway in a park and there's grass along the side, you would clearly see the difference between the pathway and grass. Oh, wow. So for mobility. It would be outstanding, right? Yes, it would be uh, very. Uh, our our patients. Independence. Yeah, our, our patients have uh, reported that it has helped their their mobility and their independence greatly. Yeah, and that's a that's a huge quality of life issue right there. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure you guys will keep improving this, but uh, for now, that that's a huge leap forward. Well, I, I certainly hope you a lot of uh, a lot of success with this. Again, the company is Second Sight. If people want to look into it, where would they go? Uh, well, you can uh, 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 go to our website at www.secondsight.com, or you can uh, call our uh, toll-free number at uh, uh, at eight seven seven. 756-3703. Great. Thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you again next year with uh, maybe you'll have even more advances for us, Dwayne. I hope to be able to report new uh, advances, yes.